Hey everyone, welcome to Boondog Dwayne's RV Show. In this video, I'm going to be going over the lithium battery install and the solar install for our new Intec Terra Oasis travel trailer. Um, this is kind of catered to the Intec Terra Oasis, but it's kind of a basic install across the board. I do have a lot of media pictures and probably a video I'm gonna be inserting, so I will be going back and forth and doing that off my switcher. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is just the equipment that I used, and there's a lot of equipment out there, and no way am I endorsing any product, no one's giving me anything. Everything that's in this uh, RV, I have purchased, or Susan and I have purchased ourselves. The first thing I want, just wanted to go over when we're talking about the Intec uh, Terra or Soul lines is that construction of the uh, Intec products and the Soul and the Terra it's a full aluminum frame aluminum structure and then of course everything is attached to that aluminum structure so as you can see in this picture this is a this happens to be an Intec Soul Horizon but you can see all that wiring is put in at the factory drilled through the frame with grommets at every position so there's no chafing against the wires uh, so the Intec is a little different that way as there's, you'll see that when I had to choose my wiring path because you just can't drill through a wall and you're not able to get in that wall and st install grommets. So I had to pick the best way possible. So for the Intec owners, um, please note that you know I, I, I picked my wiring path as the shortest distance uh, based on the easiest path to our battery compartment, which is all the way across the trailer from the converter. Uh, so with that, I want to start out with our batteries. And uh, I am a battery Evo dealer, so I went with two 202 amp hour lithium battery packs. I like the battery Evos, uh, very high quality cells and they are in a nice steel case and they come with six, uh, 600 volt Anderson connectors. I want you to also notice that every connection for solar, the batteries, uh, I have uh, 40 amp breakers, which is like pretty major to make sure that you have all your breakers I happen to use. This is kind of almost a standard breaker um, that everyone is using. Um, and you just want to make sure you have those breakers installed on the solar end. Um, you can use the fusible link or, or standard like um, MC4 connector fuses, but make sure you have them on all your power leads uh, going into the in and out of the controller from the solar from your batteries. Um, so let's get on back to the batteries. So again, I use the battery Evo. I've been using them for a lot of different. Uh, installations, backup power supply, and I've had a really good, good, um, uh, um, high quality uh, usage out of these batteries. So as far as your battery compartment, all standard trailers and RVs usually come with one wet cell new from the factory, and of course it's in its vented battery box. With our lithium ion batteries, we do not need that battery box. In fact, the RV Association just wrote a, uh, a mandate or a uh, actually uh, there's actually a, a script about that that the dealer does not need to install a battery box if you're putting in lithium. Well, ours did come with that battery box, and so right to start, you remove the screws from the top. You remove the screws from your vent tube. Um, I left my vent tube in because. Under our seat, under our dinette, is our battery box. And uh, let me pull up a picture of that really quick. Um, here's the batteries inside of the battery box under the dinette. So when, and, and then you're going to remove that lower part of your battery uh, vent, vent box. Um, and it screws. And when you pull that out, you're going to find another two inch. Um, corrugated hose that goes out the bottom of the trailer if you had any leakage or whatever with your wet cell battery. So that needs to be removed. I pulled mine right out and then I went to Home Depot and there's these um, uh, two inch uh, test caps and it's just a little 98 cent round cap and I put that in and I put that in with Sicoflex 221 which is heavy duty and I use black 
um, RVC uh, epoxy or um, adhesive, and uh, I sealed up that that hole all the way together. And uh, of course, I'm using two of the uh, battery Evo 202 amp hour batteries. I cut out a piece of plywood that matched the floor space of under my dinette so I have something to attach everything through and not drilling holes in all over and um, putting in screws in my flooring of my trailer. So that is one inch, uh, you know, carpentry cabinet grade plywood. And that's the good stuff. Um, with that, it was, you know, the lithium batteries are pretty much plug and play. I, uh, you can see I have my uh, positive negative battery terminals I screwed into the, and that's that uh, CDX plywood is really thick. It's two layer. So uh, I just got two cargo loops at Harbor Freight and screwed a loop, a st stainless steel on either side of my battery. And I'm using a ratchet strap, that way I can easily take them out. Uh, it's pretty heavy duty, actually. And uh, those batteries are sitting on top of foam. And the foam I got from Harbor Freight, it's the little interlocking uh, foot mats for your, for your workshop. And I cut those up. So there's a pad on the bottom in between the batteries and then, of course, over the top. Um, so it's a pretty easy installation. You can see my batteries are offset, and that's because on the side at the top of each of those battery Evos is the Anderson 600 volt connector. The next thing I use to tie my batteries together is the Polaris multi-taps. These accept four gauge wire. I get these on Amazon, and it's pretty cool because you can I can parallel my batteries together using the multi-tap, plus I can have my solar as one of the inputs there, and my solar goes right in. They make them up to five, um, five, six, nine. Uh, you can get pretty big taps if you want to, and that's your installation. So the battery, of course, is really, really an easy installation. It's uh, like plug and play, quick. The only thing you need to do when you're installing the lithium batteries and all the new progressive dynamic uh, uh, converters have the lithium switch, and you're gonna want to uh, you're gonna want to turn that switch on when you go from wet cell to your lithiums, because that's gonna increase the charging uh, voltage to 14.46 uh, to charge your lithium batteries all the way. If you don't do that, you're only gonna get to 13.6 at the most um, if you do not turn that switch on so that's in your converter it's up in the left hand corner if you just there's one screw you pull your faceplate off up in the upper left hand corner is that switch so the batteries again very very easy installation especially with the battery evos especially with the anderson connectors and the battery evos come with these and the leads four gauge uh, silicone covered you know high quality leads and of course i inputted my uh, one uh, 40 amp i'm using 40 amp breakers so really easy installation that's kind of up to you how you want to do that I'm going to tell you with our Terra, with the brand new Norcold 12 volt only uh, full size fridge, as well as our Norcold chest freezer fridge that's in our outdoor kitchen, I, the 404 amp hour batteries is not really overkill because we boondock 99.9% .9 of the time. But 404 amp hours of batteries is, is like adequate. Um, 200 100 amp hour lithium batteries is gonna get you through it's a, a, a great starting point it's kind of up to you what you know it's kind of about spending money and where you want to spend your money is on those lithium batteries and that's kind of you know my my take on that is you you can't have too much lithium uh, especially if you're boondocking if you're in an rv park and a trailer park i still recommend at least one 100 amp hour lithium battery because you can drain those uh, if you go with agm you, and and wet cells you have to make sure you don't damage those and drain them anything below 50 percent you're destroying that battery lithium on the other hand uh there's not that issue so uh, and it's a proven technology so the batteries piece of cake anyone can do that i think i did my batteries the first day we had our trailer uh, and I think I had the batteries knocked out in about a half hour, ready to go. Uh, remember to seal that vent tube on the bottom. I'm leaving my top vent tube 
for the top um, piece of the case and that's going to be a little it's a way that fresh air comes in and heat can expel because right above my batteries and one of my inverters is um, you know the the plywood for your dinette seat so with that let's move on and talk about solar in no way am i going to uh, try to figure out how much solar you need that is entirely up to you and there's so many good videos. Will the DIY, DIY solar guy uh, has some great videos. So find him on YouTube. I give him that prop. He's the best. I learned so much in the beginning from Will. And uh, he's very knowledgeable. All his tests are real time. And he has good equipment for all his testing. So go watch those videos from Will. Because that's what he does. I, am, I do own a lighting and concert lighting sound video company, so electricity is my life. But as far as calculating what you need and the difference between MPPT and uh, the uh, other systems, uh, everything you can find there on Will the DIY Solar Guy on YouTube. So let's go over what I believe, and I am a Renogy dealer. I believe Renogy makes the best panels. Um, their controllers, the Rover Li has come a long way. There were some few issues with the Bluetooth not connecting. Um, but as far as Renogy panels, I believe they are the best panel made. Uh, they have a great warranty. Like almost all the solar panels have great warranties. But don't be afraid to go and do your research as far as which are the best panels. I'm gonna tell you right flat out in the beginning, I do not recommend flexible panels. Uh, they do fail easier, and once you've, unless you have some way to apply those to your roof and be able to replace them, uh, there's just still too many failures with the flexible panels. So I recommend rigid panels. Uh, I go with the Renogy. And I've never had a problem, and they produce basically what they're supposed to. Um, and, and remember, if you get a 100-watt panel, don't expect to ever really get 100 watts out of a 100-watt panel or 200 out of a 200. That is just prime conditions with the sun in the right place. So on my Terra, I went with 400. Uh, I, I originally was going with 400 watts on the roof, but as a dealer, I ended up with these 125. So I have fi 500 watts of, of solar on the roof and four panels. Um, and uh, I ended up going with the Victron controller. I originally installed the uh, Rover uh, Li60, and I put in the Bluetooth module for that. And with that system, you do get the DC Home app, and it does give you a lot of functionality um, in this system. But with the Victron, um, I don't have to buy uh, the Victron uh, Smart Solar MPPT 100-50, because I'm under 50 amps on the roof. Uh, it just gives you more control, the app, gives you more control. I'm able to quickly adjust my absorption voltage, my float voltage, and my duration fixed or adaptive. And it's just, I'm able to control my panels and boost. If I need to boost that float, float voltage, voltage, I can. Uh, you, the the Renogy system, the Renogy system is based on more that you're using the brand new Renogy batteries. Uh, and again, the, the Bluetooth is built into the, uh, the Victron MPPT 100 or 50, all the smart controllers that is built in. Whereas I had to buy a Bluetooth unit uh, for the Renogy product. Um, also, the next is talking about your battery monitor. I actually installed, because I had one on the shelf, the 500 amp Renogy battery mo uh, monitor with the shunt. It's a really easy uh, installation. You are actually hooking your negatives on your pull side, and that is actually getting all your measurements of what your battery, battery has and what it's doing. Uh, and the Renogy works great, no problems. The Victron, of course all the Victron's a little more expensive, but the Victron uh, battery monitor, it's 500 amps as well, and their shunt, very, very high quality product. 
So those are the two things I recommend uh, as far as the controllers. Um, again, that Renogy Rover is set up kind of more standard to those Renogy, the new Renogy lithium batteries. And I do like the Victron much, much better. I think Sean Ryan, who's in our uh, Soul and Terra groups, as he kind of led me that direction when I needed more control turning the panels on and off. Um, as well as I do use a uh, solar suitcase as a sun chaser. Sorry about that quick picture. So I do have a Renogy 200 watt solar uh, suitcase that has its own Wanderer controller. Um, don't If you've heard some myth that you can't use two controllers at the same time, you can. You can stack them. They're running independently and they will both shut, uh, go into float mode and shut down and when your batteries are charged. So that's kind of the equipment I'm going over. Um, Next is mounting your panels to the roof. I recommend the, the rigid panels. Uh, I like the feet that are on the Renogy panels. It's an aluminum foot and it has lots of space. And I mount my panels with 3M VHB 4950 two-way adhesive tape. It's industrial, it's strong. I have a video where I'm trying to pull the panels up after the install and I bent the brackets. So uh, my little kit and, and way for doing this is uh, the I get a roll of VHB 4950 and uh, the X3M, uh, the adhesion accelerant or the adhesive promoter, is it's the 3M111 uh, promoter is like, is a huge deal. You use that on each surface, totally clean with that high powered, high powered alcohol. You clean each surface, put on your VHB and it's not coming off. Uh, it, it's just not going to come off. So with that, my process is the VHB tape on the feet. And once you've done that, you're going to use that accelerator on the roof. You're going to find your best placement for those panels. And uh, you're going to use that uh, 3M111 every place where your footprint goes for your install. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's easy to do. And it's not a lot of drama. Uh, it's really easy to do. Anyone can do that. The next thing is once I've placed those, I found my location. I've placed those panels. After I'm all done with that, I use Eternabond, that's my Eternabond strips right there. I, I put Eternabond strips over each foot, and then when I'm done with all that, I happen to use the GE silicone uh, um, caulking adhesive around every piece of Eternabond. Everything that I do, I use that uh, GE silicone caulking over it. Once you've done all this, we've already driven in 30 to 40 mile gusting winds at 70 miles an hour. This, your panels are not going to come off. It's pretty much the standard way to mount panels. I also want you to notice on my leading edge, my, my you know upwind edge of those panels, I put in a one inch uh, angle stock strip to keep air from going underneath my panels. So that was... Uh, Something I I looked at a bunch of different ways to install the panels on the Terra, and with its tilt forward design and that sloping roof, and using my wind gauge, and it was actually a windy day when I did my installation. I, I was going to go two panels on either side of the tra trailer along in line with the trailer, but it turned out that with my wind meter and these 20 mile an hour winds, I had less wind with them all the way across, and. Uh, the angle it gives me, it's like I, I do really, really well with, uh, with the four 125s. Quite pleased. I make too much power as it is. And then I have my solar suitcase as a sun chaser uh, when needed, and I have a 50-foot uh, extension cable on that. So m make sure you, you put down some kind of wind break. I did the same thing on the backside and drilled holes on it, and all my cables attached to that with zip ties. So it's a pretty easy installation. Uh, one of the things I'm going to get into is on the Intech product, 
up on the roof. It's not a walking roof. You can go on your roof. As you see, I'm on the roof. And you can see under my knees is a nice one inch piece of plywood. And when you're up there, you can actually see the frame rails where the uh, VHB fiberglass, it, I mean the Astel fiberglass uh, is attached because it's a one piece uh, piece of fiberglass for the whole roof of the soles and the terrace. You can actually see where your frame rails are and use your plywood so you're not putting your knees uh, through the roof. And of course, it's easier to put on knee pads and have that plywood because my plywood goes between two frame, frame rails. So it's a pretty easy installation. One of the things I realized when it came to drilling a hole, and we'll, we'll get to this. So we mount our panels. Um, in this picture, I haven't put my, my rail uh, upstage or downwind right behind those panels, um, but there is the same thing as the strip in the front with hose drilled, and all my wires are zip tied to that rail coming over to my, um, where I drilled the hole into the trailer. So here's the deal. You don't really need to drill a hole, which I did, and I put in a gasket, and I put a gland in there for my two wires to go on. Here's where I drilled my hole, and I have interior pictures we'll get to next on the Terra that show my uh, wiring run into the trailer. Uh, again, you have to think about where the frame is, and this is kind of, it's almost like Intex set it up. So one of the things I could have done where I have this, our vents right there for the head, um, I could have just drilled a, two holes right through the side of this, and my wiring could have ran, ran right down the vent pipe, right into my converter. Um, and of course, with a brand new trailer, this was just a plastic uh, a putty knife. Uh, the die cord just came right off. So I could have easily just drilled two holes right in the housing and went straight down uh, into, into my converter. I installed the Camco Cyclone uh, vents for the head and for the gray tank, which is the other side over the shower. I could have easily just notched that bottom plate and my and then used my die core all the way around that and I could have had my wires still run into the trailer. So as far as the Intech Terra Oasis, the path I chose was into the converter and came straight down from the roof. And I'm going to show you the pictures here in a second for you Terra owners um, exactly how to do this. Um, so my path is into the converter. From the converter, I fish down into the lower cabinet below it. There is a wiring run available there because the TV's right under that and the HDMI and the power and everything goes through there. So once you're into the, here, here's a picture. The uh, converter has one screw holds the faceplate on. The faceplate pops off. I removed my door because that's the one door in the whole Terra that does not have the locking hinges. So I removed my door, it was four screws. I put that back on the bed while I worked and then uh, commenced to uh, working work on my wiring runs. One of the things is down below, if you haven't taken your uh, Terra drawers out, the two green tabs, you just pull them in and your, door, your drawers come right out. Uh, they're just on the track. You push them back in, pull the tracks forward, they pop right back in. So back to this converter area. So here's a picture. In this picture, in the back behind all the wires and that aluminum frame for your bus bars, you will see a black pipe. That is that same pipe that goes right up to the roof, and right there you can see light through it. That light is the bottom of your vent. So now as you see, I had all this room right next to that pipe where the pipe comes down uh, here's a shot too next to the wire. There's the black pipe on the right, uh, right, right on the inside of the aluminum frame and the, the uh, uh, common bus bar. There's plenty of room to run your, your wires right down, right along that vent tube. So I did not have to drill a hole. I did not have to put a hole in my roof. I did not have to use a gland and use all that die core and seal that up. So that's an advantage for you, the new installer. So once you're into your once you're into your converter and there's so much 
<laughs> there's uh, so much wiring in there, uh, especially the solid core wiring uh, uh, for your AC, that that literally holds up your whole converter without any problems. No problem at all. Uh, if you need to, you can put a, uh, maybe a waste packet upside down if you feel more comfortable. But I had so much loop there in that Romax, I was able just to uh, bend the Romax and it held it right up and away from the TV. So with that, from the roof, right in this picture, right on your right side of that, there's the bus bar you see in the other previous picture, is right behind that is your vent tube to come straight down into the box. Now, once you have your wiring into the box, the next part is the hardest part of the install. Now, a lot of travel trailers, especially um, the Lances and the, all the different travel trailers, you have that, the wooden walls, they're put in on top of the frame. It's really easy to fish through in a lot of locations in those type of trailers. Um, again, with the Intech, we have the whole framework with all the wiring inside. You're not going to go to the edge of your trailer with a four-foot drill bit and try to drill through that aluminum. And if you did, you're not going to be able to put in grommets. Your wires are going to be, you know, moving around inside freshly cut uh, drill holes. So with this, back to the lower wiring into my cabinet. And I'm trying to do this where you just follow me. We uh, solar install. Uh, from there, wiring down the vent pipe area. Again, you can just drill holes or notch, remove that vent cover. I suggest you go with the Camco Cyclones. They really, really work. It's like uh, probably the greatest thing you can do to reduce black tank smells is the Camco uh, Cyclone vent. And as you can see at the bottom of that base plate, you could easily just take your Dremel or even a, a drill, drill two holes, run your wires right down, then do your installation for the, the Cyclone and uh, use your die core, your sealant, your GE silicone caulk. Or, and you can do the same thing if you just want to remove your vent. Um, uh, drill two holes in the side and then just make sure you caulk that up for a 100% uh, watertight seal. Um, from that point, we are now need to get our wires down this space. Now this is the space right here. This is the wall behind the TV going down that's my red and black from the roof and from there you need to you need to pull those drawers out in the lower cabinet and all the way in the back is that hole in the far far back corner there that's all your wiring from your uh, control panel for all your lighting and the and the awning uh, by right by your front door so with a fiberglass fish I was able to fish my wires part away and I was trying so hard to get those wires all the way up I, I just have to tell you this was like this was like the hardest part so I'm in that that space I fit use my fiberglass fish I didn't want to use a metal one you don't want to disconnect in that wall remember it's your HDMI your power for a power socket for the TV and the the bracket for your um your uh, antenna wire is back there. So there I am trying to fish and trying to fish up through this little hole in the back. And uh, well, let me get to that picture for you. Sorry, guys. So here I am f trying to fish through this hole, my hand back behind the plate. That plate that's there is, uh, the, is the plate they put in for your drawer with the sheet metal piece on it that your magnet catches your drawers have a magnet on the back and they catch that and that's what keeps them secure so here i am trying to fish up and i'm trying to get all the way up the wall to this point right there and then i realize all i have to do is get the wires inside of this hole and then I just reached, after an hour of trying to fish my wires, that my fish with the wires on it kept getting stuck. Um, so I ran the fish up there to grab onto my wires from up above, and, you know, I was just going to pull them down. I realized that all I had to do was reach in that hole, and I grabbed the end of my fiberglass fish. All I had to do was where that red bucket is just reach my hand in just about a foot. And there was my fish that kept getting stuck on the HDMI junction box uh, from behind the TV. So an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was of frustration. All you got to do is gently reach your hand back there, pull out your fish, 
tape on your wires and then gently pull it through here. As you can see right here in the back of this picture are, is my red and black wire and that is going down to the lower portion to the lower portion of my drawers in the back. I drilled a hole through the floor. I made my con connections and this should be here is that hole so where my wiring's coming through the floor that's into this uh, that's into the lower cabinet. Um, with that there's this great hollow square tubing that runs the full length under the trailer that I was able to pull my fish through, pull my wire through, and this is where I started. Um, once once I got to this side of the trailer, I changed my wire coloring so I don't have all reds, blacks, reds, blacks. Uh, I use green and white for my uh, input power into my controller. Uh, and then in that case down there, I have two uh, another polar two other Polaris two taps that I used um, to connect those wires. So uh, it was pretty easy from that point. Again, my fish through that channel right in front of your front axle. Then I pulled the, my wiring all the way through um, and I did use uh, flex cable all the way. Then from this other side of the trailer, it was pretty basic. This goes right into my battery box. So basically from this side of the trailer, uh, all my again once I pulled through all my tubing had a half inch flexible cable um, conduit uh, corrugated cable conduit and then I just ran down the frame I reused the screw screw holes that were in there um, for I just pulled the screws and those are your fastening screws for the uh, part of the wall inside and I just reused all my screw holes I did not drill any more holes and then I drilled my hole straight up into the battery box and uh, my wires came right into my batteries. And that's where I made my solar connections. Again, a lot of this is going to be based on which solar controller you use here. I have a picture where I have my, uh, I should have a picture here. Again, it's going to be based on which solar controller you use uh, in, in your installation. I swear I had a picture of it. I guess I don't. I'm sorry. Well, regardless of that, I do have um, right in here. Uh, this is where I mounted my controller. And I mounted my controller on two powder-coated L brackets I got at my local hardware store. I mounted it uh, six inches off of the floor and about four inches away from the wall. I mounted it to two L brackets and screwed right into my one-inch plywood in the floor. It was actually a really, really easy installation. Um, again, I, I went with my Renogy uh, uh, battery monitor. Um, there are a lot of different ones out there. I've actually seen some reviews on some of the cheaper uh, Chinese import and knockoff ones on Amazon. Uh, much cheaper uh, than the Victron or the Renogy. Um, I would stick with the name brand product. So, again, it was a really, really easy install. Once I got to that point, once I, I made it through the Libernith of wires and realizing I could just stick my hand down there, um, this was the hardest part is just getting that fish in there safely and uh, getting it up the wall because there's no way you're going to hit that hole in the back without using a fish and uh, pulling it down to the bottom. This was the easiest wiring path I could find. I wish I had noticed and taken my time on the, the vent because I shouldn't have drilled a hole. I did. I did a great job. I'm not concerned with it. But in the end, this is a really, really easy install. Um, it was not hard. I've had this trailer in huge gusting winds going to the coast three weekends in a row. Uh, just the most crazy winds ever for a trailer. And with our R3, Camco R3 Ease Lift 
uh, recurve R3 recurve hitch, the trailer performed flawlessly. The Terra has to be one of the best towing trailers I've ever used, and I cannot wait. This is going to be one of our first trips. I love the Valley of Fire. I cannot wait to go. Um, it's going to be really exciting, really, really exciting. So, um, this video uh, is just kind of a guide. Again, you're going to need to figure out how much power you use. I can tell you, if you had 300 plus amp hours of battery, you're going to appreciate that. I can go two days, three days, and still be with the refrigerators running. I stick at 13.3 volts uh, for two days. Um, without charging. So having that much battery power is a great thing. Um, I can't think of any other things to say other than the batteries. Lithium batteries, easy install. Make sure you, you turn on your lithium switch in your converter. I believe most of the converters, everybody's running progressive dynamics uh, from the factory. It's, it's one of the most used uh, converters. So, and the others are all doing it now too. Flick that switch from wet cell to lithium. Don't be afraid to use the VHB 4950. Make sure you use the accelerator. Um, make sure you cut yourself some nice Eternabon strips. Get those laid down. Use your little roller and really roll that stuff in. Make sure you're above 75 degrees. I was lucky it was about 78 when I did mine. Um, use those Eternabon strips over everything you can. Uh, Make sure you use some kind of windbreak so your panels don't have a bunch of air going under it. Uh, I, I did. This is right when I installed this uh, one-inch aluminum um, uh, angle stock that I got at Home Depot. And they sell it, and it's like eight foot, uh, nine nine foot links I think or ten foot links so plenty to go across the front. I did. I do now have a uh, Eternabon strips. A, a turnabout strip going uh, uh, in front of that on the onto the aluminum stock and onto the roof, uh, and then I did uh, hit that with my GE silicone caulking. Um, and again, I, I do have a video, and I think some have seen it. I'll, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna post that and do a separate little video. I have a video of me like yanking and pulling um, on my. Uh, on my panels uh, and as you can see it's a really clean install low profile there's still that air gap um, I'm getting pretty good uh, results um, even in uh, here so this is I parked the trailers kind of under an oak tree a lot of the time uh, with the sun coming through the oak tree and my 500 watts on the roof, I'm, I'm still pulling 294 watts. So the Renergy panels are great. And I'm able to control that with my Victron app um, to as needed, which is really, really cool. Uh, if there's anything I left out, I, um, I was kind of fortunate to have my scaffold with my little stepladder on top. Uh, if there's anything I've left out, which I don't think I have, be sure to question. And you know, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to do this in a, the layman's terms and practicality. Be sure to hit me up if you have any questions. Uh, um, I, I, again, a lot of trailers are coming just with a solar pre-wire for using a solar suitcase. Don't be afraid to get started with the solar suitcase and and its own controller and just going with lithium to get started. I do recommend that. One of the cool things too with ours because we boondock is I have this great little Baja 900 watt inverter generator that runs on one pound propane and I have the uh, hose, the converter hose to run off of bigger tanks if I need to. Um, so it's pretty cool to have that. It's so quiet, it doesn't bother anybody. In fact, when you have the max fans going on high, I can't. You, you definitely don't even hear this little generator outside. Then, of course, we have our big 4,500 watt one for running AC when boondocking. Uh, so don't be afraid to just start out uh, with that solar suitcase and uh, some lithium batteries. Start out with one. You can always upgrade. It is a, it is a big cost, especially after you, you just bought a new trailer that you waited eons for. So uh, don't be afraid to just start with that. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up. 
I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you like my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button. I have a lot more videos coming. I think I'm just going to go right after this and post the video of me yanking on the panels. Because some people just don't believe in the VHB. Uh, but the, VH, uh, the VHB 4950 two-way tape is industrial. And if you use that accelerator, it's not going to come off. So, I hope you enjoyed my show. Please uh, subscribe and like if you, if you enjoy my videos. And everyone take care. Peace. Be cool. See ya.